everyone. It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so today I am going to do a, um, a small segment out of my um, original video that I did, which was Jupiter in Taurus. And I'm going to talk specifically about a transit that is Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus today on this video. But please check out my other general video on Jupiter uh, in Taurus. It'll give you a lot more information about the whole time period. I'm just focus focusing on the day um, that Jupiter conjuncts Uranus in Taurus. And that is the 20th of April, 2024 at 6.03 uh, p.m. and that's Pacific Daylight Time. It will be at 21 degrees of Taurus and 49 minutes. Now, I looked back uh, around 500 years uh, ago. I, I went back that far. I'm sure other astrologers may go back even further to see uh, when we had something like this happen. Now, we certainly have had other Jupiter conjuncts Uranus, but we only had two Jupiter conjunct Uranus in um, Taurus around this degree point of 21 degrees uh, occur. Now, there were two that occurred, but really only one that occurred around, it was at 25 degrees. And that was uh, in May uh, 1941. I'll talk about that in a minute, um, but I'm gonna now talk about the chart itself on this day when Jupiter conjuncts Uranus and Taurus um, and detail what other planets and luminaries and where they are. So the sun will actually be in Taurus too. It'll be at one degree. The moon will be at 28 degrees of Virgo. We'll have Venus um, conjuncting Chiron uh, at 19 and 21, 20 degrees respectively. We do have a Mercury retrograde going on. It will be at 16 Aries, 49 minutes. And it will be conjunct the North nodes, which are also in Aries at 15 degrees, so that's a pretty close conjunction. Uh, Mars will be at um, 22 degrees of Pisces and it will be relatively uh, conjunct Neptune, which is at 28, so these are this is Mars and Neptune in Pisces. And of course, we'll still have Saturn around at 15 Pisces. Pluto will be at two degrees of Aquarius, so it'll be well into Aquarius. In fact, the whole month it'll be there. And Venus will be at 19 degrees of Aries. So we can see that we've got a fair amount of Aries going around here as well, which to me says there's probably an importance here of Mars in the mix because Mars rules Aries as well. So when we go back to this whole um, time period of May uh, 1941, and then of course we can look at just generally speaking even the months that followed and really, there was a lot of things happening in 1941 with regard to the Second World War. Um, a lot of people were killed, uh, in particular, a lot of Jewish people, um, you know, writers and scientists. Um, they also had um, uh, England being bombed mercilessly. Um, but then in turn, of course, uh, British troops were doing the same as well. This was the year, 1941, when Pearl Harbor was also bombed in December 1941. And of course, that really um, started the whole um, joining the war of the US of A. So I'll leave it at that. Um, when we look at um, the other time period, which was at 29 degrees of Taurus, it was May 23rd, 1858. I think some of the things that I felt would be sort of highlighted at this conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus, when we look at um, Jupiter, we know that Jupiter rules Sagittarius. It rules the ninth house. And what is the ninth house? A lot of times we refer to the ninth house as the house of travel. It's the, the house of the expanding mind. It's what means something to me. Um, but it's also foreign things, foreign people, foreign places, um, and of course then travel uh, in a foreign land. And of course, we're talking about Uranus. Uranus really rules outer space. Um, it, it, it refers to science or scientists. 
It also speaks to unexpected things, unexpected events. And so when I saw these both going together, I thought that maybe there's going to be some major uh, forward movement with regards to space, that's Uranus, and Jupiter, which represents travel. So I put the two together and said, space travel may be really um, at the forefront at this time. And of course, we're talking kind of April time period, but I would take it probably even on um, in a few months, so April and May of 2024. The other thing I thought this might have to do with, uh, because of course there's shakeups and unexpected things with Uranus and Jupiter representing foreign nations, foreign things, I thought this might be tied in with a migrant crisis. Now we're already having these migrant crises happening on an ongoing basis. I'm making this in August 2023, but there may be some major thing that happens at this point. Let's hope there's some major thing associated with maybe new laws to help protect people, because Jupiter can also rule laws as well. And of course, as we look at just the base of Taurus, we're talking about, we're talking about land, right? We're talking about the food we grow on the land, that type of thing. So there can also be big changes with regards to foods, um, that some kind of increase of changes in that respect too. Hopefully these increases are for the better. And I saw this whole um, Venus uh, conjunct Chiron in Aries as um, a real healing. This is a, a major healing to help us move forward independently. And I think this might be tied in with this whole um, migrant crisis that we've had going on, that there's maybe more benefits that can come in here to help heal some of these people. Um, that are having such difficult times in their own countries. But this whole Mercury retrograde, also in Aries, conjunct the North Nodes, says to me that there needs to be reconsideration, that's a retrograde, right, uh, with regards to our destiny path. And again, I think this is tied in with, actually, I think I'll broaden it even, certainly tied in with uh, the migrant crises that we have going on. But also it could be tied in with any kind of association with travel itself. Um, and laws could be thrown in here too, because of course, Jupiter rules laws as well, and higher education. So all these areas could be up for some kind of um, reconsideration and uh, review. Um, and the retrograde is going to cause that type of activity with regards to those areas of life. Uh, and then, of course, when uh, Mercury will go forward again, there's going to be this rush of um, new paths opened up. We look at Aries. Aries is the very first sign of the zodiac. So this is actually independence and moving forward. Now, just prior to this um, conjunction, that moon that will be in Virgo will be trying that Jupiter and Uranus. So that's going to be interesting too. That says to me that rules and regulations of some sort um, will be brought in um, and then maybe on, and not maybe, on that day of the 20th of April, they're announced. Um, and this is something that's coming from, you know, people who make the rules, people who make the regulations. And there may be some surprises. And as I said, these surprises may be associated with travel foreign foreign places, foreign people, um, higher education, the law itself. I think the thing that I really got struck by with this Jupiter conjunct Uranus was the fact that it really is going to have this energy of saying, I want to break free and really want to take maybe some risks. Jupiter as um, an influence will expand anything it touches. So it's going to be expanding the rather um, unexpected, sometimes explosive energy of Uranus. And so this is going to have some people say that if you've got something around this degree, and you really do have to have something important around this degree, and it does have to be pretty close to it to have the real effects of it. But it could be having a lot of people saying, I want to break free of this whole situation that I'm in. I want to get out of it. And they're going to want to take risks. So now I'm making this way in advance of this transit happening. 
So maybe start considering potential ways for those folks that do want to break free to spend some time now to figure out how you can do that systematically maybe between now and April 2024 so that when you pull the trigger or make that decision to break free of something, it's more, it's more easily met with and the opposition isn't there. I felt also the other like image that came to my mind was the effect of jumper cables, right? When you take those jumper cables and then put them on the battery so that the electricity or current flows, it also can do that. So I thought from a positive standpoint, this could usher in some really literally electrical energy that gets things moving, that have to move forward. So look to the house that this Jupiter conjunct Uranus uh, in, uh, in Taurus occurs in. Um, and what I'm going to do is I will cover, of course, the signs and um, the, the ascendants next. Like I said, I think this whole Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Nodes is really planning and thinking of blazing a new destiny uh, path. And I think that that opportunity to do that is going to be provided by this Jupiter conjunct Uranus towards the end of April 2024. Certainly, an opportunity will be provided. And like I said, if this does aspect something directly in your chart, you may not hesitate uh, or have any doubts at this time. Now, we will have Mars um, that will be in Pisces as well as Neptune. And of course, um, we also have um, Saturn there too. So the thing is about this setup, especially with the Mars and Neptune, in Pisces, um, certainly this can increase um, a desire and um, energy to do with spiritual type things, great compassion. But it's also got another side. And deception um, or something akin to deception can be activated. Um, it may also be accompanied by sort of peculiar or irritating feelings. Now I'm talking about the Mars action on Neptune, both in Pisces. So there may be some kind of irrational feelings if you've got, say, this Mars and Neptune uh, connection happening in your chart as well. So we're looking at 22 to 28 degrees of Pisces for that particular um, energy, right? But I think that this whole setup here also will provide an opportunity to break free as well, because the Mars especially the Mars action um, is, is in um, a compatible sign with Taurus, right? It forms sextiles. So it seems to me, um, like I said, it, it could be a combination of things um, where some opportunity is provided through great compassion, through spirituality, but just as possibility is, of course, this deception um, and feeling irritated feelings that this may also somehow provide an opportunity for this breaking free of the Jupiter conjuncting Uranus. Now, the thing about Venus um, at 19 degrees of Aries, um, it, it will be separating um, from Mercury at this time. And so I saw this also, if there is anything to do with, say, um, diplomatic relations, etc., um, diplomacy might be weakened at this point. All right, hopefully that gives you a little picture or window of things. Let's start off with you, Taurus. So Taurus, um, obviously this whole conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus occurs in your first house. Now, again, you're going to have to have something that's exact here. And to be honest, a lot of times some of these um, exact conjunctions can happen on an internal level. And especially when we talk about Uranus, Uranus can provide great enlightenment. And with the action of Jupiter expanding it, some folks may get an internal enlightenment and an aha moment, an epiphany of some sort. Again, look to the house that this is in. Um, but for your case, of course, Taurus, it's in your first house. So it's all about you. Uh, what needs to change up in your life? Um, do you need to make some big changes here? Do they need to be internal changes? And or do you need to make some kind of sweeping change in your life? You may get the opportunity here 
And I would say this is April and May 2024, Taurus. Um, so when we look at the effect of um, anything in Aries, for instance, where we've got um, that Mercury uh, retrograde, the North Nodes conjunct, that's going to be happening uh, mostly here in your uh, 12th house. So this could say there's some kind of um, action happening behind the scenes. 12th house is very much a hidden house, but it also has to do with the metaphysical world as well. Um, any hidden places, that means ashrams, uh, hospitals, government offices, that type of thing, could also be uh, highlighted here with regards to something to do with your destiny, because this, of course, is where the North Nodes are. Um, some message may come to you or some reconsideration where you have to rethink some things with regards to your destiny, maybe associated with some of these areas that I just spoke about. When we look at um, the whole effect of Pisces, we're really looking at the 11th house. And, you know, Pisces is a sextile with your sign Taurus. And so this Mars um, conjuncting Neptune sextiles that whole Jupiter, Uranus. And so there may be some association here with you being compassionate, being spiritual, developing your spiritual side of yourself, um, and making these changes that you personally need to make in your life, i.e. the first house. Uh, but do take care of, um, I would say, anything Anything that comes in from groups or friends, make sure you just do a double check with regards to what they might be presenting to you, especially if it's associated with this big change you want to make. Do your own double checks on this stuff too, right? Take care, Taurus. So Gemini, um, this whole conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus happens in your 12th house. So this is the hidden house. More than likely for most Geminis, this may be associated with some um, enlightenment of some sort, where you you get what you maybe need to let go of, you get what you need to clean up. You might even get involved in, I would say, some kind of compassionate um, project or spiritual project that goes on behind the scenes. And again, this does have to affect you at um, the 21 to 22 degree mark of Taurus to have any real effect. Now, when we look at the effect of Mars, and Neptune, that's going to be in your uh, associated with your 10th house. Um, well, this is actually going to be squaring you. So there may be some association here with regards to some action that goes on in your career um, that's not so easy to maybe assimilate or to do. Maybe you've got to work hard uh, with regards to your career. Um, certainly Mars there in your 10th house is going to require lots of action, lots of energy being released there. But if this can be associated with something that's compassionate at a high level, or maybe even a charity level, it should work out fine for you, even though um, we have the square happening at the same time. Now, you will have a sextile to your 11th house with anything in Aries. And of course, that refers to that Mercury conjunct the North Nodes in Aries. So for me, this says potential opportunities through the groups that you belong to, maybe your friends, um, that can help you or assist you on this path, this new path, destiny path that you want to take. It can also say that you may have an opportunity to have some hopes and wishes come true as well, uh, Gemini. So it seems to me that working behind the scenes uh, is going to be important for you and to maybe Pay attention to unusual things that may come up or surprising things that may come up for you um, where you may have to take some kind of action. Um, certainly, if there are things that you know you need to either clean up, maybe way back in your psyche or literally in behind the scenes, um, this would be a good time to do it. You're going to get a lot of assistance to get that done but I think you will be working hard and putting lots of energy into your career. Let's hope you get some opportunities that come from behind the scenes that you didn't expect to assist you along with that progression in your career. Take care, Gemini. 
All right, so for Cancer, this is your 11th house that's affected by this Jupiter conjunct Uranus. And this, you form a sextile uh, with Taurus. So this is very positive. This is giving you opportunities, should you wish to take them in the 11th house. Now, the 11th house, generally speaking, we talk about it being friends and groups, sometimes hopes and wishes. Um, but it is also that whole house that's associated with um, anything to do with social media. So it may have some uh, cancers taking some opportunities here, maybe to break out and do something unexpected with regards to the social media. Or social media may provide you with some unexpected ways of developing more into utilizing the social media as well. Now that whole Mars, uh, as well as Neptune in Pisces, trines your sign, your fellow uh, water signs, of course. And so this we look at is the ninth house. And this is, of course, the house of travel. It is foreign places, foreign things. It's higher education. Um, it's the law. Um, so I would say that there may be some opportunities for you here uh, with this favorable trine energy to maybe take a trip, maybe take a wonderful trip um, overseas. Certainly, if water is involved, that's Pisces, uh, which is where this is occurring. This could be very, uh, it could be very spiritual, uplifting, and inspiring at this time. So when we look at um, that Mercury retrograde conjuncting uh, the North Nodes in Aries, that forms um, a square to you. So really, this is referring to maybe you want to get on that new path, that new destiny path, um, but you find that you're really having to put a lot of, you know, hard work into it. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. It can still happen for you. Um, and certainly, I would say um, the Mercury retrograde may put a dampen on you trying to maybe take these opportunities that I just spoke about and the favorable energy to move forward. Um, I would say just know that you have to go around the obstacles, think outside the box. And I would say, especially with the square, wait till Mercury goes direct. And at that point, uh, you may find a release of um, a little bit of the challenges that you may have to get on this new destiny path that you want to get on. But overall, Cancer, you've got some favorable energy happening with some very powerful planets at this conjunction. Take care. So, Leo, um, we have this whole setup of Jupiter and Uranus squaring your sign, and it affects the 10th house. So this says to me that you're going to have to be dealing with some 10th house matters, and typically we refer to those as your career, but it could be your social standing and your reputation as well. Um, there may be just some big changes that happen at work for you. Um, that are totally unexpected. And, and even now, as I'm making this in August 2023, you can't, you, you can't actually forecast, uh, what they might be. Um, but, and again, you would have to have something that is very close to 21 or 22 degrees of Taurus to have any major effect. Okay. Otherwise, a lot of these times these go by without any real, uh, effect on any of us. Uh, but if you do, um, there may be some challenges that you have to face. Now, I was thinking of one in particular. Um, say something happens, your boss or director or somebody high up exits the scene, and they were very much integral part of this project you were doing. And now you have to pick up the pieces and be the leader. And that's a challenge for you. So for some Leos, that may actually happen. When we look at that lovely uh, North Node conjunct Mercury, even though it's retrograde in uh, Aries, that's going to be trining your sign. So I would say, especially with regards to your destiny, um, you may not be able to move forward right away at this time in April, um, but this is a time to formulate and to plan uh, where you want to go next, uh, because that's favorable energy, that trine. It just with the Mercury retrograde, you may not be able to move forward especially on an independent path, right? Where you want to have be independent of something and go on your own path, your own destiny. Have some patience there. Um, when we look at the whole effect of Mars uh, in Pisces as well as Neptune, it's going to be in your eighth house. And so this really refers to what? It refers to joint finances. It refers to um, 
your investments, that sort of thing. And um, your psychological self, um, deep relationships, that sort of thing too. And so those types of things could be, so this I see with this whole Mars effect and Neptune, um, I would say that you could have some doubts here. The eighth house is also kind of a hidden house. It's where secrets are as well. Um, but I'm thinking that perhaps you may have some doubts is what I'm thinking. The effect of Mars and Neptune together in the eighth house. Um, it's also possible that um, you could get some inspiration to decide you want to do some investing. I would just say do double checks. Um, if you are in doubt about signing anything, or about changing anything with regards to your investments, do due diligence. Uh, but you could have some inspiration here as well. It can go kind of either way with that whole effect of Mars and Neptune together, right? Just, I would say also during this time period, Leo, uh, double check all your investments, anything you invest in, uh, to make sure they're all properly lined up and properly running smoothly is probably what I would say to you. Take care, Leo. All right, Virgo. Well, lucky you. This whole Jupiter Uranus trines your sign and involves the ninth house. And so this would be literally a perfect time to <laughs> take an unexpected, that's Uranus, Jupiter trip, um, and also Jupiter maybe overseas or on some to some foreign land. Uh, for other Virgos, if you are seeking out, say, higher education and want to start that, this may be the go-ahead to unexpectedly get approved to go ahead. It can also bring um, favorably, uh, I would say, and unexpectedly favorably, any kind of association with the law or the courts at this time will go into your favor for sure. Anything foreign associated at this time could be very, very beneficial for you, uh, Virgo, for sure. But it also can, you know, if we're looking at a, a higher level here, um, that ninth house also represents, you know, what's important to me, what has meaning for me. So certainly with that effect of Uranus bringing in enlightenment, uh, maybe you've gone through, some Virgo's gone through a whole lifetime of not understanding or realizing what's really important, and you get it in April, May 2024. Now, when we look at that Mars and Neptune, Virgo, it's opposite your sign in Pisces, right? And so I would say pay attention um, to anything that comes to light with regards to, say, a partner. Uh, business partners is included here as well as clients. Um, you may have some confusion happening, like that effect of Mars on Neptune in your seventh house can have some kind of confusion happening around this time. So again, just pay attention to what's going on with the other, that's the seventh house, and see what you can do to clear things up as best you can. Um, but also, this is also, to me, a signal, especially as the opposition, possible deception going on here. Um, so if something doesn't seem right, check it out, Virgo. When we look at uh, the effect here of that Mercury retrograde uh, conjunct the North Nodes, that's affecting your eighth house. Um, so this eighth house really says to me that there's a new destiny path meant for you with regards to eighth house things. So that's your psychological self. That's any shared resources. Um, that's your investments. That's your credit cards. That is your mortgage. Um, and it being a retrograde, this is going to have you going back, looking at all those things, basically carefully and saying, uh, with regards to me having my destiny path working, moving forward with regards to anything to do with my investments and money, um, I need to take a close look at it. And that's the effect of this whole Mercury retrograde uh, conjunct your north nodes in your eighth house. I would say, uh, Virgo, wait until Mercury goes direct before taking any definitive action uh, with regards to your investments. But this would be a good time to really investigate what's going on in all those areas. Um, let me just think here. 
Yeah, I'm just looking at the overall effect. I mean, the overall effect here, I think, is for you to make some changes um, and to put things into your life that have meaning for you. And that's kind of me saying that's the bottom line here, no matter what transpires during this time period. Take care, Virgo. All right, Libra. So this happens in your eighth house. So there might be some enlightenment uh, or something come up for you unexpectedly with regards to joint resources, your investments. It's also your psychological self. So you're also a sign that could literally have some enlightenment happen uh, as an internal event as instead of an external event. Um, I would say you could have some big changes in fortune here. I mean, Jupiter uh, conjunct Uranus can say, you know, in the eighth house could have some big change happen that's unexpected with regards to your finances. So make sure all your finances are in good shape. So that includes your credit cards and your mortgage, you know, and any loans that you have as well. But at its best here, you could perhaps be, you know, approved for this big loan that you uh, had, had actually submitted for and hadn't heard anything. And out of the blue, they say, yes, we will approve you. Or you need an extension to your line of credit. And unexpectedly, you get that approved. But like I said, I think this is also when we're talking about the eighth house, where um, enlightenment can happen uh, with regards to an inside internal event as well. When we look at the Mercury retrograde and north nodes in in Aries, well, we know that's opposite to your sign, right? And so this has you looking at your partner with regards to uh, some kind of communication. Uh, almost reading this um, Libra as a communication comes in through a partner, either business partner, marriage partner. It could be clients as well, where it may um, ask you to reconsider uh, your your destiny path in some way. I'm just going to leave that like that because that's kind of what I get. It won't be till Mercury goes direct, though, that you'll be able to take some real action of meaning for yourself. But this also says to me, you know, getting on that destiny path that you want to get on, and you're going to want to get on it without any fetters around you. When we look at uh, Mars and Neptune in Pisces, um, we're looking here um, of the effect that it's in the sixth house. So to me, this is saying that, you know, you could have some real action and inspiration taken with regards to, say, any health matter. Or this could also be you just changing up your health, where you want to get uh, in a program for better health, whether it is your diet, nutritional needs, or your... Um, your exercise type things too. And this can also be mental health as well, by the way. Um, Mars here um, in, in Pisces, uh, along with Neptune said, I I'm getting the feeling of a lot of inspiration could potentially happen for you. Now the sixth house is also a house of service. And it is also the house of our day to day job. And if we don't do a job, it's what do we do day to day. And so there is a potential here for some confusion. Um, there is a, a potential for, at worst, some deception. That's the effect of Mars on um, Neptune. So I would say if, if by chance, uh, Libra, there is something happening in the day-to-day -day job that just seemed a little bit, you know, uh, not quite right with you and you're wondering what's going on and it's causing maybe some confusion, check it out. Don't, don't hesitate to check things out in case something is going on that uh, isn't right and that it might be part of that whole confusing, it's almost like a smoke screen being set up. That's what I get as an image here. So check it out and make sure that, you know, things are okay, that you get the advice that you need or help that you need, if indeed that is what you need. But like I said, if you do have health issues, this could actually bring some real true inspiration your way and action, action in connection with the inspiration, right? All right, Libra, take care. So Scorpio, this whole setup of Jupiter conjunct Uranus is in your seventh house. So that means it's opposite to you. And so this may more than likely see any other or your marriage partner, business partner, or clients be more of a focus here in terms of 
something unexpected happening. And don't read unexpected as bad. <laughs> I'm not saying that couldn't happen with an opposition. All depends how you handle things. Um, but you may have to deal with something unexpected happening to your partner, business or marriage, and or your clients um, that surprises you, right? Hopefully it's going to be a nice surprise. That whole uh, Mars, as well as a Neptune in Pisces, well, it forms a trine to your sign, Scorpio, because it is also a fellow water sign. And so this says to me that there's some real action that can be taken, and especially if you associate this action with uh, anything compassionate um, or anything to do with, say, a, um, a charity type uh, energy you're going to have a lot of favorable stuff happening here. And of course, you know, it goes without saying that that whole Mars and Neptune also at the same time here um, are going to be forming a sextile to the Uranus and Jupiter conjunction, right? So for you, Scorpio, that could turn out to be something very unexpected comes your way through a partner um, that helps you get on this new destiny path. Now, Mercury is retrograde at this time, but that's okay. Um, we'll just say that we'll wait till Mercury goes direct to be able to maybe pull the trigger and move forward. Uh, but that's in your sixth house. So Mercury retrograde conjunct the north nodes in Aries is in your sixth house. So this has you uh, potentially reconsidering what? reconsidering whether or not you need to take some kind of rethink, right? I'm going to take that whole Mercury retrograde for you as a rethink of what? If you're not working, it's the day-to-day -day activities that you have. If you are working, it's your day-to-day -day job. It could be a rethink of your health, your physical health, or your mental health. Yeah. But all in all, Scorpio, um, I think if you, as long as you're considering other folks, especially partners at this time, you could have some real breakthroughs happening here that are unexpected, uh, that may bring you some benefits. Take care, Scorpio. All right, Sagittarius. So this falls, this lovely Jupiter conjunct Uranus in your sixth house. And don't forget, Jupiter as a planet rules your sign, Sagittarius. Now, there's no big, huge um, sort of configuration that happens here. It just happens in your sixth house. And because I think, you know, Jupiter rules your sign, Sagittarius, I would say that you could have some real favorable, unexpected things come your way with regards to your health, your day-to-day -day job, if you are in service to other people, there could be some real benefits that come your way that you weren't expecting. So this could play out something as simply as, um, say, you didn't realize you had this benefit that you actually need right now through the job that you do. So I guess if this was me, I would, uh, when I'm listening to this video, I'd say, you check out all the benefits that I have on my job. Maybe I'm not seeing all the different things that I could potentially leverage as a result of working in this job. It can also see a change, uh, a, sun, a sudden unexpected change in your health, where maybe those folks that have been experiencing ill health get this unexpected occurrence happening, perhaps through what? Jupiter's a teacher or an advisor um, that gives you some good advice. When we look at Mercury retrograde conjunct the north nodes in Aries, well, we know it's a fellow fire sign, right, Sagittarius? And it is going to try in your sign. And so even though it's a retrograde Sagittarius, I would say that this is giving you very favorable energy um, with regards to you getting on your destiny path. And uh, wait till the Mercury goes direct um, in Aries. And I'll be speaking about that particular uh, retrograde at another time in more detail. But this is favorable energy to reconsider things regarding your path, your destiny path. That's it. Um, now, when we look at Mars and Neptune, which are in Pisces, that squares your sign. And it squares your sign in the fourth house. 
So this says to me that there may be some kind of, um, I think, potential for confusion at the very least with regards to anything fourth house. Now, typically we refer to the fourth house as our home. It can also be our childhood home as well. It can be our mother and by extension, our family, as well as our habits. So all these things can be up for some kind of challenge for you, Sagittarius. Now, it doesn't mean everything has to be bad, uh, but it does say to me that there may be confusion here, whether it's your confusion or your family confusion or your mother's confusion, and you're going to have to think outside the box to resolve some challenges here. That's what this says to me. Um, but overall, it looks like you may get some inspired um, benefits through your job that you do, as well as if you've got any health issues as well. So take care, Sagittarius. So Capricorn, um, you've got a beautiful setup here. Just this standalone Jupiter conjunct Uranus will trine you, and it's going to be involving the fifth house. I love the fifth house. So the fifth house is children. So maybe there's an unexpected pregnancy. Maybe you've been trying and things haven't worked, and all of a sudden, wow, you find out you're pregnant. Um, but this is favorable energy, remember, right? It's trying. Creative projects. A creative project comes your way totally out of the blue. That makes you smile. Um, you start your own business at this time. Now, there is a Mercury retrograde going on, um, but this is big energy you've got, this Jupiter and Uranus, right? Um, what else? The fifth house is also love, true love. So for some Capricorns, true love might come your way, totally unexpected, out of the blue. And with Jupiter involved here, it could be with a foreign connection of some sort, right? So super for you, uh, Capricorn. But again, it has to be something around the 21, 22 degree mark in your own chart, right? Now, when we look at that Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Nodes in Aries, um, we're looking here at a square and it is in your uh, fourth house. So this is really saying to me that Maybe you want to buy a house. Maybe you want to sell a house. Maybe you want to get out of your family home and have your own place. And there's just some reconsiderations that you have to take uh, into, into account with regards to the square. So it means you have to work at it. It's not all straightforward, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. Especially once Mercury maybe goes direct, um, things will ease up a bit for you with regards to anything to do with the fourth house. That's your family. That's your mother. It's your habits. It's your home. It's your childhood home. All those things could be up for some kind of challenges here where you've got to reconsider things, maybe work more um, in tandem with other people. Um, and maybe it's not all so straightforward. There has to be a lot of give and take. Now, nicely, you are going to have that Mars and Neptune that is in Pisces sextile your sign. And so this is involving um, your third house. And I would say that this really supports, if you're doing anything with regards to charities, anything to, with regards to compassionate projects, compassionate writing, writing about this type of thing, or communicating about this, or maybe in your job having to do this, this is going to provide you some fabulous opportunities here um, to do that. Third house is basically communications. Um, it is also um, short, short distance travels as well. So you may be given the opportunities here to do some of that, especially if it's associated with something like a compassionate project, charities, um, that type of thing, right? Yeah. It also could provide you an opportunity because it's a sextile. Maybe there was some confusion of some sort like the effect, just the basic effect of Mars on top of Neptune. Maybe there was some confusion with regards to something written or uh, something discussed or a message, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this gives you the opportunity to maybe clear that up because it's a sextile, right? Well, enjoy that trine of Jupiter and Uranus to your fifth house, dear Capricorn. Bye for now. So Aquarius, uh, this whole setup of your ruler or one of your rulers, that's Uranus, 
conjunct Jupiter is squaring you um, and it will square your fourth house. So this says to me that you will have some unexpected challenges with regards to the fourth house. What is the fourth house? The fourth house is your mother. By extension, it's your family. Um, it's the home you live in. It's also the home you were brought up in. And it's your habits. So all these areas of life or one of these areas of life could be affected by some challenges for you. These will come in unexpected. Now, the thing is about Jupiter, uh, generally speaking, Jupiter doesn't bring in a lot of negative energy unless you're really asking for it and you've planted seeds that way. And then, of course, that could be something different. But Jupiter, generally speaking, likes to bring favorable energy your way. And so even though it's a square, it just may seem that whatever favorable energy is brought in in this area with the conjunction happening, um, that you will have to somehow, uh, it'll impact the fourth house, you know, your family and the house, your house that you're living in and that in some way where you may have to make some adjustments. But I really feel that this Jupiter conjunct Uranus could bring in some lovely energy for you. It just means that you're going to have to maybe change up some things in the home and family as a result of it. When we look at um, that whole Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Nodes, this affects your third house. Um, and of course, there's a sextile formed here. So these are some potential opportunities for you to move forward with regards to your destiny. Now, with the Mercury retrograde, it may mean that you have got to rethink things or redo some things or just think outside the box to take these opportunities. So opportunities come your way, um, but it means that you've got to maybe wait till this Mercury goes direct before you can move forward with whatever new direction you want to take. Right, when we look at um, Mars as well as Neptune in Pisces, that's, we're talking about your second house here. And so this could, Again, this whole effect of Mars conjunct uh, Neptune is a combo type thing. Um, the second house is your income. So it could bring in some unexpected, inspiring um, money that comes your way, right? Because we've also got at that same time um, that Mars and Neptune will be sextiling Jupiter and Uranus too. And so I think that there's a possibility of you having some uh, income come in at this time, especially if, say, you're doing your job and earning your money through some kind of compassionate project, some charity type thing, um, anything sort of in that realm. But on the flip side, I would say just as a general thing, um, just take care that maybe something's not being hidden with regards to the income that you make. So what does that mean? Just do a cursory check of your, your paycheck, your pay stub, and make sure everything that's being taken out is appropriate um, and that you're getting everything that you should be getting in terms of that money coming your way, right? Um, yeah, so that's what that's how it could play out, is something as simple as that, and then you just got to do the correction on it or get things corrected here. But it's also about values. And so if we look at Pisces as a sign, it, it really reflects at its best spirituality and compassion, high levels of that, agape love. And so this may also have you um, really seriously um, putting some energy into value of yourself, um, maybe even being on a spiritual kind of mission to um, assist people to help them understand your value and to seek those people um, understanding your value and respecting your value. Now remember, we're going to have Pluto at this time it is going to be in Aquarius and it'll be at two degrees. So if by chance Aquarius, you do also have something around the two degree mark of Aquarius, wow, there could be some big transformational thing happen to you as well. Keep me posted on that. I, I'm, I'm trying to keep track because this is going to be a, the Pluto aspect here is a once in a lifetime uh, for you Aquarians. I would like to kind of keep track of um, what's happening to people and, and at what um, specific angle or planet do you have 
say, for instance, something like two degrees of Aquarius, which is where Pluto will be, because it's all about transformation, right, with Pluto, and seeing the truth. Well, take care, Aquarius. All right, for Pisces. So lovely Pisces, this forms a sextile, and it's involving your third house. What does that mean? You could have some unexpected communications come in that are very favorable to you. You could be finishing off writing a book and have the opportunity to maybe get it published, which is the opposite house, the ninth house. That could be a lot of fun for you, right? And especially with the um, influence of Mars and Neptune also in your sign, Pisces, this is a big activation for you, right? Um, and that whole activation of the Mars and Pisces in your sign, uh, sextiling the whole Jupiter and Uranus, to me, uh, really kind of pushes more energy uh, and action-oriented type stuff towards uh, the Pisces. Um, third house is all about communication. So I would say this is a very favorable time to, you know, send out communications, but it may also be a time when you receive uh, communications that are very favorable to you. And as I said, they're unexpected. And these unexpected things may bring in benefits. That's the Jupiter side of it. It could also bring something in from overseas or foreign for you. Um, that's through a written communications. I mean, it can be contracts too. Maybe at this time, some Pisces sign this fabulous contract um, to, I don't know, write a book <laughs> or write something or um, have some kind of um, sales and commerce uh, type activity happen for you that sets into place unexpectedly for you in a very favorable way. Now, when we look at the um, Mercury retrograde conjunct the North Nodes, we're looking at your second house. So this is you reconsidering the money that you make. And maybe all this thing that's going to be happening favorably to you in your first house and your third house uh, to do with communications means you've got to rethink some communication that you've got, some contract that you've had. Well, once you do that, you pull the trigger and go forward and you can get that money that you want in the second house. I would for sure probably consider waiting for Mercury to go direct before doing that. Um, but this is you reconsidering and redoing and reformulating something like a contract that has to do with um, you know, your next step forward on your destiny path. Lots of communications for you that are very favorable, uh, Pisces. Take care. All right, Aries. So this uh, lovely conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus falls in your second house. What does that say? It says un unexpected benefits coming in with regards to the money that you make. Um, on a more basic level, this could have you um, unexpectedly being valued, right? Because the second house is also values as well, where um, maybe you have this happening at an internal level where you get shaken up and say, look, I'm not valuing myself enough. And in turn, people aren't valuing me. And in turn, I'm not giving them, getting the money that I want. It could also bring in unexpectedly um, possessions your way, right? Mm -hmm. And that may have some kind of foreign connection as well with Jupiter, right? Uh, kind of ruling foreign things. But this is a shakeup of some sort with regards to the money and income that you earn. Um, Jupiter, as I said various times, uh, rarely brings in negative things. But if your income does need to be shaken up and maybe you have to or decide to, uh, leave a source of income, i.e. a job, um, that may be a good decision for you because maybe that job that you're earning the money from isn't valuing you and that whole thing of valuing you makes you uh, take this decision to leave the job unexpectedly maybe. Now when we look at Mars and Neptune in Pisces, that is in your 12th house. And so this says to me that... Um, you know, there could be a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Uh, in particular, I would say, Aries, just, um, uh, you know, Mars can represent males as well. So there's a couple ways Mars and Neptune can turn out. On the favorable side, it could be inspiration. 
literally, that word, that you feel, you know, this energy that is inspired. Um, and maybe that has something to do with this whole activation by Jupiter and Uranus of your value and value of yourself, um, where you decide to take some internal action with regards to valuing yourself more by realizing maybe where you're tripping yourself up, maybe even on an internal level where you're putting signals out uh, that people pick up that you're not even aware that you're doing. It could also, though, have you at a very high level uh, working um, in some project, maybe to do with um, a hospital, um, ashrams, government offices, prisons, all those areas that are behind anything behind the scenes um, where you're just putting a lot of action into compassion um, and understanding behind the scenes in those places. That can also be at the fore here, where you're going to be working maybe hard, taking lots of, putting lots of energy into a compassionate project of some sort. That would be the best way to use that Mars in combination with Neptune. But on the other side, there's a small possibility where the other part of that energy of Mars and Neptune is operating, and that is secrets coming out um, and deception. Now, the 12th house technically is the house of hidden enemies, right? So for, for very few Aries, you, you may have some action happening behind the scenes that's very deceptive, um, that, you know, brings out your secret, or maybe you find out a secret, um, you know, that might be a little bit jarring for you. Um, when we look at that whole Mercury retrograde conjuncting the North Nodes in Aries, wow, Aries, that's in your first house. This is fabulous. Um, this is having you just reconsidering your destiny path your whole life. You know, the first house is about you, everything inside you, everything around you. Um, and so you're going to take that Mars retrograde to reconsider where do you want to go with your destiny path next? And I think that's tied into that whole second house of values and the income that you earn. Wait, I would say till if you can, Mercury go direct, uh, certainly before signing, say, any contracts um, or pulling any trigger to get you on an independent path because Aries is all about being independent. But wow, that's a fabulous setup for you um, where you can, you know, start some new, new beginning in your life. If we look at the tarot cards, um, this, this tarot card is represented, this particular transit is represented in my mind by the fool, right? Starting on a new path, unfettered uh, by anything around them, and they're able to just move on a whole new path in their life. That's kind of the effect of the North Nodes in Aries. And Mercury can bring in things like communications, uh, once it's gone direct, that are important, as well as your thoughts, right? Your thoughts turn to, what do I want to do next on my destiny path? What action do I need to take? And maybe part of that action is you being independent, Aries. Take care of yourself, Aries. All right, folks, that kind of wraps this up. Um, I hope this has given you a little bit more insight to this specific transit of Jupiter conjunct Uranus and then the influence of a few other things going on at the same time. I wish you the best of luck. As always, I love to hear what's happening to folks. Um, so I guess April, April, May time period, I'll have uh, some, I'm sure, interesting comments from uh, various viewers as well as my clients. All right, folks, take care of yourself. I'm wishing you all the best with regards to, I hope, what I'm hoping is unexpected benefits, unexpected beneficial teachers or advisors coming in um, that will really give something that is a benefit and that is um, that is good for us, that is nice for us, and that's very sweet. All right. Take care of yourself, everybody. Bye for now.